Okay. Uh, you start off talking about <coughs> the technical detail of my own formal model. Uh, in this talk, I will summarize some of the uh, my opinions about uh, the use of formal models in uh, AGI research in general. Hopefully, they will trigger some uh, discussion. Uh, first, uh, I completely agree that uh, for AGI, uh, the use of a formal model is completely necessary, very important. Uh, in my opinion, uh, a complete AGI work should consist of three uh, layers of, of work or three levels, depending on how you call it. Uh, you need a theory of intelligence typically represented in some kind of uh, natural language. That's basically your idea. Uh, then you have a formal model which formalizes uh, the ideas into some kind of model uh, with more accuracy. And then finally, you have a computer implementation. Okay. Uh, I think that the middle layer is completely necessary to provide uh, a connection between the top one and the bottom one. But on the other hand, uh, it doesn't mean any model, formal model will work. Uh, also, uh, I don't believe a formal model in AGI should be evaluated as a pure mathematical work by its own nature without thinking about uh, how it serves uh, the, the theory of intelligence, how it guides the computer implementation. Okay. So I think uh, AGI, uh, in AGI, formal model must be evaluated within this context. So what's the current situation? Uh, in my opinion, the current uh, traditional models use the AGI, the most influential schools, uh, including mathematical logic, uh, theory of computation, and the probability theory. Uh, there are some minors, uh, but uh, I think these three are the, the most influential school. Uh, in this talk, I will address my opinion about the first two. Uh, in the afternoon workshop, I will talk about my opinion about probability theory. Uh, here is the summary is I think each of them uh, has some serious limitation uh, when applied to AGI. Even though each theory by itself, of course, is a great theory, it has been uh, uh, arrived at many uh, great success uh, in history of science and history of mathematics and so on. But when applied to AGI, uh, the situation is fundamentally different. So I will quickly go through the first two. First one is logic. Uh, the logic, uh, the mathematical logic, uh, we, we, I think we all agree that was developed uh, not for AGI at all. Uh, it's developed to provide uh, a solid logical foundation for mathematics or for meta mathematics. As a result, the focus of that theory is on theorem proving. On the other hand, thinking in general sense is far from theorem proving at all. Yeah. Uh, so not only uh, when we're thinking in everyday situation, not only is not theorem proving, uh, we cannot even, I don't think we can even take a theorem proving as a model or idealization for the actual thinking. Uh, that's, that's a very special case. Okay. Uh, so because of that reason, uh, my conclusion is, uh, I actually have a separate paper to argue that, uh, is the, the logic of mathematics fundamentally uh, it's fundamentally different from the logic of cognition, uh, even though there'll be some similarity here or there for sure. So where are the problems? Uh, I summarize the list of issues uh, of mathematical logic when applied to AGI or cognitive science or AI. Uh, First group, uh, it's not a single problem, but a group of them are the type of various type of uncertainty, which are typically not allowed in theorem proving, but in thinking we cannot avoid them. Uh, second group is the justification of non-deductive reasoning, which is uh, it's an old problem in logic and uh, philosophy. And the third one is the openness of AGI system, which you, are, you have to allow new information to get in, which may conflict with the system's previous belief. And finally is the relevance issue, which is especially important for AGI because you don't not only need to derive correct answer, uh, the answer also need to be relevant to the problem you are thinking, which clearly is not something a traditional mathematical logic model can provide. So none of the problem I just mentioned 
is new, not only to AI, but also, also to logic itself. Okay. Uh, actually, for each of the many of the proposal, uh, solutions have been proposed, uh, both in the field of AI or AGI and in the field of logic. That's, in a sense, that's why the, there are so many non-classical logic. Okay. Each of them basically address one of the issues I, I mentioned. Uh, but to me, uh, they're not enough uh, for two major reasons. Uh, one is most of them try to address the issue in isolation. They believe each of the problem can be solved uh, for its own sake. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think the, the change are not uh, radical enough. Uh, typically, the change typically happens in the grammar or inference rules or some axioms. Uh, but I think the problem maybe is in the foundation, especially in the semantics and in the definition of uh, what is a valid inference in the system. Uh, so that's basically where I started. Uh, clearly today I don't have the time to talk about detail, uh, but I will talk about the assumption. Uh, the logic I developed is called non-axiomatic logic. Uh, the basic assumption is that the system has to work with insufficient knowledge and resources when doing reasoning. Okay. Uh, so the key point I want to mention here is, uh, first, it will be a new theory of uh, what is truth. Uh, in this kind of system, I will develop, I will use uh, what I call empirical theory of truth, or to take truth or degree of truth as evidential support. That is, is not compared with a model or a world. Instead, is uh, the truth value is just uh, judged according to what the system know, uh, the available evidence. Uh, so that will fundamentally change the situation and change a lot of other things uh, if you, you study the logic. And the second one is what is the valid inference. So according to this uh, new definition of truth value, he, uh, in my system, valid inference are the rules where the conclusion are evaluated according to the evidence provided by the premise. Okay. Uh, again, it's not justified uh, or compared with the model or reality. So this, uh, based on the semantics, the, the logic provide a, a whole bunch of solutions to all the problems I listed before. Again, I don't have the time to justify my conclusion, but if anyone is interested, we can talk about that uh, afterwards, or you can read my publication. So that's my, basically, uh, a position statement with respect to logic or mathematical logic. Uh, then the second topic is a theory of computation. Uh, once again, here the situation actually is pretty similar. Uh, the theory of computation or of automata, algorithm, computability, computational complexity, and so on, there's a whole bunch of things, uh, were not developed to capture human problem solving. Okay. Uh, they were developed to specify uh, problem solving procedures in mathematics, in calculation. So what's the difference? A key difference is, uh, in mathematics, what do we want? is a context-independent and repeatable procedure. Okay. But outside mathematics, usually problem-solving process uh, is not such a procedure. Okay. Sometimes it can be idolized into such, such a procedure, but in this out, uh, idolization, uh, you ignore some very important factors. For example, time. This is a topic uh, Chris Thorson uh, just addressed in the previous session, which uh, I agree to a large extent. Okay. Uh, time, the concept of time in computation is to a large extent ignored. I'm not going to say completely ignored. Okay. Um, but also, uh, maybe a difference between me and Chris is, uh, I think in computation, uh, you ignore time uh, I think there is a reason to do that. Okay. Uh, in what sense I say uh, in computation it is ignored? Well, first, uh, time is not a necessary part of a problem 
when you specify a problem, uh, usually it doesn't include a time requirement, unless in special situations, special class of problems. Okay. And uh, uh, second, uh, I even in the processing uh, of the problem, uh, we don't think about time, except in a very special uh, form of computational complexity. It is about time. Okay? But it's not about the time in a sense like, for example, this problem must be uh, finished before 5 p.m. or I want to answer as soon as possible. You see here the, prob the issue is in computational complexity theory, uh, time expense is a property of the solution. It's not a property or a part of the problem. But in our daily life, very often, Time is part of the problem itself. Okay, that makes a fundamental difference. So even though I think time can be ignored in a sense in computation, but I don't think time can be ignored in adaptation or intelligence, which to me is a form of adaptation. Okay? In one sense, first you see that Adaptive system, by definition, typically does not repeat its internal state at all. It evolves over time. Okay? Like us, we never go back to a previous moment if you take your mind as a whole. Uh, which also is related to, I believe, to the issue of feedback, which uh, Stuart mentioned before. Okay? You solve a problem. Then you get some feedback up about the quality of your solution. Then you adjust your mind. Then the same problem appear again. You don't do the same. Okay. Do we still follow an algorithm? Well, it depends on which level of uh, description we are talking about. On the problem solving level, we are not. Because for the same problem instance, each time the treatment may be different. Okay. So that's what I call case by case problem solving. But of course, if you take the whole life cycle of the system uh, as the input and output you're talking about, um, well, it, can, it still can be a Turing machine. Okay? But it's a different time scale. Okay? So, so in this environment, I'm talking about, you see, the internal state and also the outside environment doesn't repeat itself anymore. So and also time is typically a necessary part of the problem itself, as well as a solution. When you evaluate whether uh, a solution is valid or not, you not only think about what's the problem, you also think about under what context this solution is provided. Okay? Very often, if someone provides a solution in a hurry, you have to make a quick response. People say, that's OK. If you think about three days, you still provide the same uh, solution. People say you're stupid. Okay? It's the same problem, the same solution. But the uh, evaluation clearly depends on the time you actually spend on that problem. Okay? All those factors are not in the concept of computation or Turing machine. Okay? So uh, my suggestion is slightly different from what uh, Chris suggested. I'm not suggesting to revise that definition. Uh, I suggest to introduce a new concept, which will take time into consideration in this sense. So, so once again, that's the assumption I made in my own system. As I said, uh, I assume the system is intelligent in the sense that it's adaptive to the uh, environment and the work with insufficient knowledge and resource. Especially by uh, insufficient knowledge and resource, I mean, the system must uh, only depend on finite uh, computational power. Uh, it has to run in real time. It has to open to all kinds of input, uh, including the one that's beyond its current uh, scope of knowledge, uh, or it may conflict with its current belief. Okay. So if a system has to work in such a situ situation, especially if it's a reasoning system, uh, then uh, you will see that the traditional logic or traditional theory of computation does not apply anymore. Uh, even only, or they can only apply on some 
um, some aspects or part of the situation. You cannot base on them to build the whole system anymore, okay? just because of the assumption. So to summarize, I know I'm making some very strong claim without uh, evidential support. It's just because I have a sufficient resource, right? But we can, we can talk about that uh, later if you're interested. So at least I hope to be self-consistent. Uh, so the, the conclusion is first, we need formal model. That's for sure. Uh, but second, I don't think any of the existing formal model is good enough. And also, I don't think a small modification or extension will solve the problem. Okay? Uh, I cannot claim uh, my model have solved all the problem, but uh, what I'm suggesting is we need to make new models. And that's a task this whole community uh, need to take. That's all. Thank you.